Recently in the world of AI, we have seen a huge trend to bigger models, more data, more compute needed, especially with ChatGPT4 and Cloud3. And these models are amazing. But a recent article from VentureBeat suggests that large language models maybe start to plateau a little bit and get all more and more basically similar. And the article suggests that small language models could be the next big thing and big trend in 2024. So let's look at that. As I write here, some of them are a little better, GPT-4, but there's no quantum leap. I think everybody would say GPT-4 is a quantum leap, quantum step ahead of GPT-3.5, but there hasn't been any quantum leap in over a year when it comes to development of large language models. So we are potentially shifting the focus from simply increasing model size to exploring more efficient and specialized architectures. Small language models can be perfect for that as you can train them in a very specialized and efficient way and they also have a lot less of the drawbacks that big large language models have such as the enormous amount of data that is required to train large language models and also the extreme resource of intensive training process including all the computational power and energy which also makes training LLMs very expensive and not feasible for small companies. And as the article states here, another significant issue with LLMs is the propensity for hallucinations generating outputs that seem plausible but are not actually true or factual. This stems from the way LLMs are trained to predict the next most likely word based on patterns in the training data, rather than having a true understanding of the information. And these are all issues that are not necessarily the case with small language models, as you can oversee and audit their training much more efficiently and it's also much less expensive and much, much faster, making it also possible for small language models to be implemented in smartphones, tablets, or other devices. I think there was also a recent article that I've seen about Apple, how they train their own small language models. Uh, I could not find the article right now. But the Venture article, uh, the Venture Beats article also states that Google has come out with a series of small language models, which makes sense because the large language model space basically belongs to Microsoft with OpenAI and ChatGPT. Well, all the language models are getting more and more similar because they are kind of plateauing, but still ChatGPT has first mover's advantage. So everybody is using ChatGPT and most people don't see any reason to switch to another LLM because ChatGPT is pretty, pretty good and all the others are, if anything, just minor incremental improvements, but nothing groundbreaking. As the article states, small language models can be fine-tuned for particular domains or tasks more easily than large general purpose models. This customization enables companies to create small language models that are highly effective for their specific needs. And there's also potential for enhanced privacy and security. And here the article briefly talks about how Google is aggressively pursuing the SLM opportunity with their new Gemma models that you can find, download, and use on Hugging Face. And of course, we don't know how this year is going to look like and how GPT-5 will look like, but it seems plausible to me that LLMs are kind of plateauing and there cannot be a lot more that can be done with this kind of architecture and approach. This is something that Ben Gertzel also talked about in a recent article um, that I dissected here on this channel where he talked about how LLMs uh, will plateau at one point and are not a feasible way to AGI because of the underlying architecture. And this also means a great opportunity for the ASI Alliance and the Hyperon development of a decentralized AGI architecture, which we'll talk about more on the live on Wednesday for sure. And as you can see here, even the article from VentureBeats talks about the centralized nature of LLMs raises concerns about the concentration of power and control in the hands of a few large tech companies. Which obviously is the main reason why I am so pumped and excited about Hyperon and the ASI Alliance. But yeah, if you watch this channel regularly or if you think that decentralized AGI built on a blockchain sounds interesting, 
be sure to check out the live on Wednesday where we go more in depth into that.